good morning friends today we are going to uh, deliver a lecture on the polymers and i will cover the topic of the introduction their properties and their uh, classification we know that the polymers are one of the important or integral part of the life we know that uh, from morning till evening we utilize the polymers in various forms and they are we cannot we cannot leave the polymers like that and we didn't have any substitute for that we know that the polymers the biggest problem with the polymer is that they are not biodegradable but otherwise they are one of the material which is utilized in a huge capacity and the polymers they are the large molecules which are composed of repeating structural units typically connected by the covalent bonds example polyethylene and we know that ethene which is a monomer keeps on repeating to form a polymer and leads into the formation of polyethylene a variety of natural polymers exist such as cell cellulose silk proteins etc and nucleic acid is also one of the natural polymer and the synthetic methods synthetic polymers are bakelite neoprene ni nylon etc the polymers they have become the integral part of everyone's life they are having a diverse structure and application ranging from the domestic articles to the sophisticated scientific or medical instruments and they are utilized the polymer how they are going to form the polymers they are the the linking of the small molecules to make the larger molecules the small molecules they are termed as monomers and when they convert into large molecules they are termed as polymer in the process of the polymerization these small molecules which are having at least two reaction sites they react together to form a large molecule these two reactive sites of a monomer is known as functionality of monomer the number of repeating units in a polymer chain is known as degree of polymerization the polymers with high degree of polymerization they are known as high polymers and those with low degree of polymerization are known as oligopolymers let us see the properties of the polymers polymers as they are the big molecules they are having the average weight which may approach to 10 to the power 5 or maybe more that is why they are also known as macromolecules the polymers are semi crystalline materials it means that they have both amorphous and crystalline regions the crystalline regions provide strength and hardness and the amorphous regions they provide flexibility to the polymer the crystallines crystallites they are embedded in the amorphous region and on heating or cooling most of the polymers undergo thermal transitions and they provide insight to the morphology they are defined as the melting melt transition and the glass transition temperature the another property they are the intermolecular forces in the polymers uh, they may be van der waal forces dipole dipole attractions or hydrogen bonding these intermolecular forces are in addition to the covalent bond which connect the repeating units in a polymer the chemical electrical optical mechanical and thermal properties of the polymers they depend on the size and shape of polymers the presence or absence of characteristic intermolecular forces they are combustible materials they have low densities and they show excellent resistance to corrosion generally the polymers are thermal and electrical insulators polymeric materials are tailor made substances they dip, uh, depending upon the final application we can synthesize them as a transparent or opaque hard flexible brittle tough malleable or elastic or in form of fibers elastomers and the plastics the classification now if we look into the classification of the polymers uh, they are divided in the various terms the first the first classification is based on the source let us see that how they are uh, classified on the basis of the source the let us see uh, on the basis of the source they are divided into three one is the natural polymers another synthetic polymers and third one is the semi synthetic polymers the natural polymers the easiest way to classify polymers is their source of origin the natural polymers are the polymers which occur in natural in the nature and are existing in nature natural resources like plants animals example proteins cellulose starch rubber etc synthetic polymers 
they are the polymers which humans can artificially create or synthesize in the lab these are commercially produced by industries for human necessities example polyethylene nylon fibers polystyrene polyvinyl chloride and many others semi synthetic polymers they are the polymers obtained by making modification in natural polymers artificially in a lab these polymers formed by chemical reaction in a controlled environment and are of commercial importance for example vulcanized rubber cellulose acetate which is also known as rayon second category the based on the structure of the polymers the linear polymers branch chain polymer and the cross link polymers the linear polymers they are similar to the structure to a long straight chain which identical links connected to each other the monomers in these are linked together to form a long chain these polymers have high melting points and are of higher density examples pvc polytetrafluoroethylene polystyrene and many other branch chain structures or the polymers they are structure they are the structures which having branches the branches they originate at the random points from a single linear chain monomers they join together to form a long straight chain with some branch chains of different lengths as a result of these branches the polymers are not closely packed together they are of low density having low melting points low density polyethylene which is used in plastic bags and general purpose purpose containers is a common example third category that is cross link on a network polymer in this type of polymer monomers are linked together to form a three dimensional network the monomers contain strong covalent bonds as they are composed of bifunctional and trifunctional in nature these polymers are brittle and hard for example bakelite melamine urea formaldehyde resins etc third basis is the mode of polymerization the polymerization which occurs can be occur by two ways that is addition polymer addition polymerization and the condensation polymerization addition polymers uh, they are uh, they are the polymers which are formed by the repeated addition of monomer single monomer molecules the polymer is formed by polymerization of monomers which are having double or triple bonds in it in this process there is no elimination of small molecules like water or alcohol there are there is no by product of the process addition polymers always have their empirical formulas which are same to their monomers for example polyethylene next condensation polymers these polymers are formed by combination of monomers which are the elimination with the elimination of small molecules like water alcohol etc the monomers in these types of condensation reactions are bifunctional or trifunctional in nature a common example is the polymerization of hexamethylene diamine with adipic acid which results into the formation of nylon 66 and in this process there is a loss of water molecule next category is the based on the types of the monomers on the basis of the monomers polymers are classified into two groups that is homopolymers and the copolymers homopolymers they are formed by the polymerization of one type of monomer example pvc uh, teflon polyethylene etc copolymer when the polymer is made up of more than one type of monomer it is termed as copolymer for example nylon 66 buna s bakelite and many others depending upon the arrangement of monomers in the copolymer these copolymers are divided into four groups they are alternating polymers random polymers block copolymers grafted polymers the first alternating when the two monomers are arranged in alternating fashion the polymer is called as, as alternating polymer when the two monomers they are arranged in a random fashion they are termed as random polymer block copolymer when a sequence or block of one monomer is followed by the block of another and the last one is the graft polymer 
the backbone chain is formed by one type of monomer and the branches are formed by another the next category is based on the tacticity the tacticity is basically configuration and that is a stereo orientation of the of the monomeric units this is uh, in this category depending upon the orientation of the monomers is in the polymer chain polymers are classified into three types first one is the isotactic polymer if the side groups of the monomers lie on the same side of the chain it is called an isotactic polymer syndiotactic polymer if the side group of the monomers are arranged in alternate fashion around the main chain it is called as an syndiotactic polymer atactic polymer if the side groups of the monomers are arranged in irregular or random fashion around the main chain it is called atactic polymer next category that is uh, based on the thermal behavior in general we know that the polymers they are uh, depending upon the thermal behavior they are divided into two categories they are thermoplastics and thermosettings thermoplastics they can be repeatedly softened by heating and hardened by cooling they are linear or slightly branched they do not chemically bond with each other when heated instead weak van der waal forces that cause the long molecular chains to clump together like piles of entangled spaghetti hold thermoplastic chains together thermoplastics can be heated and cooled and consequently softened and hardened for this reason thermoplast thermoplastics can be remolded and reused almost indefinite times example polyethylene polypropylene polystyrene polyvinyl chloride teflon etc thermosetting plastics they harden permanently after being heated once if they are set they cannot be changed thermoplastics during molding acquire three dimensional crosslink structures with predominantly covalent bonds if the heating of these plastics is prolonged these undergo change in chemical composition to give a very hard infusible mass some common examples are phenol formaldehyde melamine formaldehyde comma alkyd epoxy resins etc the difference between thermoplastics and thermosetting plastics thermoplastics they are the product of addition polymerization thermosetting plastics they are the product of condensation polymerization thermoplastics are generally long chain linear polymers monomers are bifunctional in thermosetting they are three dimensional cross link structures which are joined by strong covalent bonds uses higher functional monomers next thermoplastics on heating they soften readily because weak forces between the chains can easily broken whereas thermoplastic they do not soften on heating because the strong covalent bonds retain their strength on heating thermoplastics can be softened reshaped and reused by heating and cooling process thermosettings can't be softened uh, reshaped and reused thermoplastics are weak soft and less brittle whereas thermosettings they are hard strong and brittle in nature thermoplastics they are soluble in organic solvents thermosettings they are insoluble in nature thermoplastics they are low molecular weight compounds or polymers whereas thermosettings they are high molecular weight substances method of polymerization addition polymerization and condensation polymerization as earlier i have given an idea about addition and condensation again i will repeat that addition polymer they are uh, typified by the presence of carbon carbon double bond in the monomer they are also known as chain polymerization in addition polymerization uh, the they proceeds by the chain mechanism and the high molecular weight polymers are formed at once condensation polymers they generally involves two monomers that have different functional groups they involve the elimination of water or another small molecules hence they are termed as condensation polymers it is also known as step growth polymerization the monomers containing functional groups they react with each other to give dimers trimers 
and um, they react together to give small oligomers the small oligomers react to make bigger oligomers and eventually high molecular weight polymers if we uh, compare them the addition polymers they are formed by the addition reaction condensation polymers they are formed by condensation processes with the elimination of a small molecule like water etc addition polymers they have molecular mass in a whole number multiple of the monomer units in condensation polymers it is not whole number multiple of the monomer units addition polymer they are high molecular weight polymers which are formed at once whereas condensation polymer the weight the molecular weight of the polymer increases steadily throughout the reaction addition polymers the monomers are unsaturated molecule whereas in condensation polymers they more they involve more than one monomeric unit addition polymers they are termed as chain growth polymers whereas condensation polymers are termed as step growth polymers addition polymers they are homochain polymers condensation polymers they are hetero chain polymers with this i will finish my lecture 1 we will proceed with another lecture where we will discuss the mechanism of the addition polymerization thank you